Hello and welcome to the Monday, February 6, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Analyzing large numbers of malware samples is always a challenge and of course scripting here is the tool that you're typically using in order to distinguish just the run-of-the-mill kind of boring malware from the interesting one that uh, may deserve more attention and that's the kind of triage that assembly line is kind of good for Guy wrote up the tool the tool itself uh, was uh, created by the cyber center canada and uh, well it's a uh, docker container essentially it's deployed in docker that uh, will allow you to upload a malware to the assembly line uh, system and uh, then essentially trigger various analysis uh, tools. Some of them commercial, some of them open source, and all of them are then summarized uh, in a report. Now you can also make uh, some of these Decisions kind of depend on uh, what a particular tool finds or what kind of malware you have. Like I said, sounds like a pretty interesting system uh, to sort of do your initial triage in particular, since uh, this looks like it's uh, much more easy to maintain than some of the alternatives. And Brian Greps posted on Mastodon about an advisory published by Fortra. Fortra is the maker of Go Anywhere MFT. MFT stands for Managed File Transfer, a solution that companies use for sort of internal controlled file transfer. The problem here is a remote code execution vulnerability and the advisory that uh, Fortra published hasn't really been accessible publicly. You have to log into the customer uh, portal. Now, Brian Krebs uh, posted a part of the advisory and it looks like uh, one of the things that they're also warning about is that uh, attackers have used this vulnerability to set up additional administrator accounts so that's something that you uh, should be uh, looking out for no patch appears to be available for this you should not according uh, to a fortra expose the web interface uh, to the public so keep it behind a vpn and such but apparently according to some scans there are plenty of exposed systems around well, you may wonder what happens if you leave admin interfaces like this exposed and don't apply patches uh, you may want to ask well any of a thousand or so VMware ESXi server owners who have found their servers being compromised by a ransomware. The vulnerability being used here is apparently an older vulnerability, CVE 2021-21974. We have certainly seen attacks like this before. What makes this attack kind of special and more visible is that the admin interface itself, the login page, is replaced with a ransomware note. So sites like Shodan who are scanning banners and such from web servers are listing now the compromised systems. And then in other admin interfaces you shouldn't really expose to the world uh, your Jira service management uh, server. Lation uh, did uh, publish a patch for this uh, last week fixing a vulnerability that uh, does allow for the impersonation of other users. However, not all uh, servers are affected by this. In order to be vulnerable, you actually have the, to have the right access to the user directory enabled as well as outgoing email. And of course, this does affect on-premise versions here. If you are using the uh, cloud instance, then you are not affected. And in other updates, we got updates for Docker Desktop, uh, fixing a vulnerability in the Windows uh, version. We also do have a new version of OpenSH. Uh, OpenSH version 9.2 fixes uh, two vulnerabilities. 
No CVE or severity uh, for uh, these vulnerabilities, but looks like it uh, may allow you to bypass some security restrictions. And we also got uh, patches from F5 for a uh, big IP CVE 2023-22374 is rated as high and uh, well fixes a remote code execution vulnerability, but authentication is required. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.